Hello everyone. Before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to two of my newest members, Ricardo Cesar da Silva Gomez and Black Pen Red Pen. Thank you for becoming a member and supporting the channel. Members get to see the thumbnail hours before the premiere starts and they're also giving shout outs in my videos. If you'd like to become a member, you can click the join button at any time. Now let's go ahead and move on to the problem for today. This problem was suggested by a good viewer of mine, good place to stop. Thank you for the suggestion. I think you're familiar with him, especially if you're watching Michael Penn. He is one of his moderators and he's a great supporter of both channels and maybe many more channels. So he su suggested this problem. This is from Stanford Math Tournament. We're going to be simplifying this expression. He also has a YouTube channel. I'm going to include the link down below. So let's get started. We are supposed to simplify 1 over sine squared 18 degrees plus 1 over sine squared 54 degrees. The original problem is in radians, but you probably know that I don't, I'm not a big fan of radians. I like to turn things into degrees and then I remove the degree symbol. I know some people don't like that, but from this point on, I'm not going to be using the degree symbol, but degrees are understood. I hope you don't mind. So we are going to simplify this expression. And to simplify this expression, I'm going to do the following. First of all, I'll make a common denominator for this one. And when I do, it's going to look like this. We're going to get sine squared 54. Like I said earlier, I'm not going to, I'm not going to write the degree sim symbol, but it should be understood. Sine squared 54 plus sine squared 18 divided by sine squared 18 times sine squared 54. Now, at this point, I would like to convert it to something that is more usable, useful or easier to handle. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the identity the co-function identity, which means that if two angles are complementary, which means they add up to 90 degrees, then one of the sines will be equal to the cosine. So instead of sine 54, I can write cosine 36. Of course, it's squared. And instead of sine squared 18, I can write cosine squared 72. You'll see in a little bit why I'm turning them into 36 and 72. But the main reason is basically we are going to get really nice relationships from here. And also the fact that 72 is 2 times 36 will also be helpful. So we can write this as cosine squared 70 times cosine squared 36 at the bottom. Okay, so this is equivalent to the expression we're going to simplify. And I'm going to split this problem up into two pieces. First of all, I'd like to simplify the bottom. To simplify that, I'm going to work on the following. How about simplifying cosine 36 times cosine 72? In order to simplify this, I'm going to take this expression and multiply and divide by something. And that is going to be 2 times sine 36. I'm going to multiply by and divide by the same thing. Of course, it's not going to change the value. And since sine 36 does not equal 0, this is OK to do. Now, why did I do that? Because I want to take advantage of the double angle formula for sine 2 alpha. And as you know, sine 2 alpha is equal to 2 sine alpha cosine alpha. So this expression can basically be written as 2 sine 36 cosine 36 can be written as sine of 72 degrees. And of course, cosine 72 will stay there. And at the bottom, we have 2 times sine 36. So all these expressions are equivalent. But we're going to do a little bit more than this. Because notice that I got the sine 2 alpha expression again, but without the 2. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 2. Now the top part, 2 sine alpha cosine alpha, is going to give me sine 2 times 72 degrees, which is 144. And then the bottom is just going to be 4 times sine 36. And again, the expression I started off with is cosine 36 times cosine 72 but I'm going to square it later on. Once I get the value, I'll square it. Now, one thing that's really interesting here is that 36 and 144 add up to 180, which means these are supplementary angles. You, so what do you know about supplementary angles, such as sine alpha and sine 180 minus alpha? They are equivalent. In other words, 
they are the same values. Therefore, sine 44, sine, sine 144 is the same as sine 36. Therefore, I can just go ahead and cancel them out and giving us a value of 1 fourth. So the expression that I started with, which is cosine 36 times cosine 72, happens to be 1 fourth. But I do need to square that. So when I square it, it's going to be 1 over 16. So the denominator of my expression is going to be equal to 1 over 16. And I'll now simplify the numerator and then put it all together. Now, how do you simplify cosine squared 36 plus, because that's a plus sign, right? Now, instead of multiplying, we're going to add their squares. How do you simplify this expression? That's what I need to do. And in order to be able to simplify this, I'm going to be using another expression, which is cosine 36 minus cosine 72. If I can find the value of this, then I can find cosine squared 36 plus cosine squared 72. The reason why I want to find this value is because this is easier to find. So here's what I'd like to do. Uh, here's what I'd like to find first. And to solve this expression, I'm going to be using substitution. As you know, that's my favorite method. So this is, let's call this A and let's call this B. So my goal is to find A minus B. What is A minus B equal to? Now, so this, this basically means that cosine 72 is B, right? Which is what I started off uh, with. And then remember the double angle formula for cosine. Cosine 2 alpha is equal to 2 cosine squared alpha minus 1. So I'm, that's the formula I'm going to use. So cosine 72 can be written as 2 cosine squared 36 minus 1. But notice that cosine 36 is equal to A. So this is going to equal 2A squared minus 1 which means that b can be written as 2a squared minus 1. Great. Let's go ahead and do something similar. Now, I'm going to start off with cosine 144. You might be wondering where that comes from, but notice that it's 2 times 72. And by using the double angle formula, I can write this as 2 cosine squared 36. Oops, that's supposed to be 72. 2 cosine squared 72 minus 1. But cosine 72 is equal to b. Remember that? So this is going to give us 2b squared minus 1. Okay, I just missed the 2b there, right? 2b or not 2b. It's 2b squared. Okay. Now, what does cosine 144 um, have to do with cosine 36 or 72? Well, first of all, it's 2 times 36, 2 times 72. But not only that, 144 is also 180 minus uh, 36. So what do you know about the cosine of the supplement of an angle? Well, since it's in the second quadrant, it's just going to be the opposite. So in other words, cosine 144 can be written as negative cosine 36. So I get the following relationship between these two expressions. Cosine, the opposite of cosine 36 can be written as 2 cosine squared 72 minus 1. But cosine 36, remember, we called it A. So this is going to be negative A. And cosine 72, we called it B. So this is going to be 2b squared minus 1. So that gave me another relationship along with this one. So I got b equals 2 squared, a squared minus 1, and negative a equals 2b squared minus 1. Let's go ahead and put these two together. And guess what we're going to do from this point on? Yes, we are going to be subtracting these expressions, right? But I want to subtract this way, if you don't mind. Let's go ahead and subtract. If you subtract b minus negative a, that is going to give us b plus a, right? And then when you subtract this way, it's going to give you the negative 1 minus negative 1 is going to be 0. And you're going to end up with 2a squared minus 2b squared. Great. So what is that supposed to mean? If you go out and factor the right-hand side, you're going to get 2 times the quantity a squared minus b squared, which can be written as a plus b times a minus b. Now notice that a and b are given as cosine 36 and cosine 72. And obviously, a plus b does not equal 0. We know that, right? The, the sum of cosine 36 and cosine 72 does not equal 0. Therefore, I can divide both sides by a plus b. That will be OK, right? So let's go ahead and do that. If we do, we end up with 1 here. And if you divide, let me go ahead and rewrite this first. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And that's going to give me the value of a minus b, which was, which was cosine 36 minus cosine 72. So this gives us cosine 36 minus cosine 72 as 1 half. 
Great. So I got this value and remember, I was supposed to find the sum of their squares. So for that purpose, I'm going to square both sides of this expression. So let's go ahead and do that. If you square both sides, we get the following. Cosine squared 36 plus cosine squared 72 minus 2 times cosine 36 times cosine 72 equals 1 fourth. But remember, we already calculated the value of cosine 36 times cosine 72, which happens to be 1 fourth. Let's go ahead and use that here. So this is equal to 1 fourth multiply by 2, you're going to get 1 half. So cosine squared 36 plus cosine squared 72 minus 1 half is equal to 1 fourth. From here, we get the value of cosine squared 36 plus cosine squared 72 equals 3 fourths because 1 fourth plus 2 fourths equals 3 fourths. This is what I needed and I got everything I need. So let's go back to our original expression. Our expression was equivalent to this. And remember, I told you that the bottom is already 1 16th. So let's go ahead and rewrite this expression. Our original expression turns into this one, which is this one. And then we're going to do the substitutions, okay? So at the top, I have cosine squared 36 plus cosine squared 72, which is that one. And that is divided by cosine squared 36 times cosine squared 72. And remember, the, the top is 3 fourths. And I got the bottom, if you go back to the original expression one more time, I got the bottom as 1 16th because my product was 1 fourth, but I squared it and I got 1 16th. So let's go ahead and do the replacement right here. This is equal to 1 16. So my expression, the original expression, is going to equal 3 fourths multiplied by 16. If you go out and do the cross cancellations, 4 goes into 16 4 times, and 3 times 4 is going to give you 12, which is the answer to my original expression. So if you want to go back to the original expression, which was 1 over sine squared 18 plus 1 over sine squared 54 degrees, of course, is going to equal 12. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Good place to stop again. Thanks for the suggestion. I really enjoyed solving this problem. Please let me know what you think. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.